Hey everybody, today's video is on the perception of the golf motion, or I'm going to rather say the misperception. Um, I have similar videos like this, but I'm going to present this in just a little bit different way uh, than I have in the past in some of the other videos. But uh, fundamentally, if you've watched enough of my videos, you understand that I, I really don't like to call a golf swing a swing, and I like to call it a reach or a touch, specifically because that is much more in line with what we are doing with a golf club. But we call it a swing, and a lot of us see it as a swing, because if you watch it in video and you watch somebody that's good at doing it, it appears appears that the function of the body seems to be doing something to get this golf club to delay and then swing around the wrist joints. Um, and where there may be a, a, a sense of the golf club is kind of swinging around the wrist joints, it's nothing that you really need to make happen. It's something that is innately built into seeing the golf swing in a different way. And this video is going to be about seeing the golf swing not in a two-dimensional manner, but in a three-dimensional manner. And it's a very difficult thing to kind of to, to um, portray to anybody through a you know, YouTube video because we are going to see this in two dimensions. We're going to, our screen is going to be two dimensions, but I'm going to ask you to try to think in a little bit more of a three-dimensional mode in this video and see if we can give you a picture of why the body does certain things that you see in two dimensions as one thing, but are actually occurring in three dimensions in the other way. All right, let's get started. So our fundamental problem is that we are seeing the golf swing in a two-dimensional kind of idea. Um, and again, of course, when you look at a golf swing on video, you are seeing a two-dimensional screen, and you may understand that there is a depth to the golf motion for sure, but it tends to be that the eyes keep kind of tracking on the lines, if you will, of the golf swing. We even call them lines, and there are no lines in a golf swing. A golf swing is always a curve. The interesting thing is, is that we, when you see a circle, you see something flat. So if you picture the golf swing in a circular pattern, you see a flatness to it and you kind of see a path or a plane that the, that the golf club kind of traces it around the edge of that circle. We, we get the idea that it creates a plane. And it, there's no doubt that a good golf swing looks like that. Like there is a clean track that it seems to be on that appears to be a circle kind of on, on a flat plane. But what we're not really understanding is that there is an expansion happening on that at the same time. So there is a dimension of movement that continues to get lost in, in the human mind's perception. We just see things in two dimension. We can sense depth in our body very well. We don't see depth very well. We only see it as, a, as perspective. So when my perspective is a circle, I've got a big issue. Now, I'm gonna change your perspective here. Let's now put it in what we would call a spiral. A spiral would be more like if I'm playing tetherball. Okay? So if I'm playing tetherball, and I'm just going to try to be the tetherball around my body, but if I just wrap this thing around me, notice that this thing just expands away from me. Okay? So my relationship with this idea that this thing has depth to it. So if I, just, if I kind of keep doing this with different angles here, I'll turn around backwards, and I'll go from this angle. Maybe you can now kind of triangulate in your own vision that, hey, this thing, there's an expansiveness thing. It's going from my center outwards. So that is not a circle. A circle assumes on some, some, on some large level that the radius stays the same. Now, there's a lot of swings that look like the radius stay very much the same, but the full swing for certain does not. So you need to kind of take this circular idea and remember that, hey, everything's moving outwards too. And to increase that radius outward, increase the speed, every part of your body has its own little spiral or moving or, or relative motion. It all must happen at once. And that is because the body respects gravity. The body moves effortlessly with the acceleration of gravity and the pressure that it creates that allows us to move outward with no effort. It is so easy to expand and feel rays, it's almost like you defy gravity. When you feel like you need to make something happen, you actually interfere with that acceleration. You try to out-accelerate gravity, and now your mass gets stalled. So anytime you try to swing in a circle, you create a problem in your body that is not natural. But anytime you create a spiral, is different. So again, I want to see the golf swing as a spiral. So if I just kind of do it on a flat line here, you can probably imagine, look at it from this angle, you can see that the, the cylinder is getting farther and farther. So if I was just to do that in line, as it's spiraling, it just keeps moving away from my center of gravity. Now for me to really tap into that, of course, I have to move away from my center of gravity always. That's why I perceive the golf swing as a reach. Because when you think about reaching, you make these arcs. 
Now, all of a sudden, you don't see a spiral in the way that you reach. Well, your body is shaped in such a way that it can, it can, and the way that its segments are connected together, that we lose the we lose the sense of the authenticity, of what the motion actually is, because the rigidity of our segments makes it look different. But at the fundamental core of it all, when you swing a golf club, when I swing it with my pro here, it's the whole motion. It's already on my body, and it extends all the way out. So the way that I the way that I move is going to dictate how successful that motion is. So if you can see the golf club, even though it doesn't look like that, I have to understand the golf club head cannot get next to my center where it can actually see that spiral. So the way we use our anatomy and the timing of our golf swing, and this is why we see the golf club fold in a good player, and we don't see it cast out in a good player, because the cast out player is trying to swing in a circle. The tour player knows that the golf club needs to arrive at a certain spot so it can spiral outwards. It, it rides, if you will, a shorter path of that spiral that I'm showing you with the pro. That is a quintessential change in the way that you actually see a golf swing. It no longer is this two-dimensional circle. It's like, oh my gosh, this thing has a depth away from an expansion in my body that allows it to actually get on the correct track. And so if I'm a spiraling, and I can we just demonstrate this with other movements, well, let's forget golf for a second. If I asked you, hey, you know, reach your hand back like this and expand it, you'll notice that the other parts of your body do something that make it easy. And there's a weightlessness to that. And then there's a weightlessness to this. And we confuse that with our muscles working, but what we're really doing is we're just letting our body use the acceleration of gravity to move us. And then we use our muscles to shape the motion. Our muscles are stabilizers. So the more imbalance I create in a motion, or the more I try to make something happen on a circle, the more it shows up as, oh my gosh, I'm off balance, and it actually stalls the motion. So to create club head speed, not only do I need to be able to see it as an expanding spiral, but then I gotta let my whole body really be reactive to that. But seeing it is the first step. So if you can start to see your golf swing in a different manner, hey, it needs to spiral outwards, not from the center like I showed you with my pro. I can't do that with my, with my rigid segments. But if I understand that conceptually that is the right idea, it changes the way your body moves. It has to move in support. And then all of a sudden that starts to look like the movement pattern. You see the pelvis move differently. You see, you see the upper body stay closed longer. You see the things that you see in elite motions because whether they experience it that level as a tour pro, their body is reacting in the most simple possible way to deliver the golf club. So learn to see it as a spiral. Don't see it as a circle. And that can be a dramatic change in the way that you actually start to train your body to learn what a true elite golf motion is.